My name is Matt Storr, and I repair saxophones for a living. Uh, this is a 1954 Colert Winenden tenor. Uh, now, I don't know if the model is actually called the Winenden by Colert, or was called the Winenden by Colert. That just happened to be the name of the town in Germany where they had just set up. Uh, this is 1954. This is one of their first uh, post-war horns that they made. Um, right after World War II, they fled, actually. Uh, there's a rather interesting story behind it. They, the Colbert brothers were, uh, their factory was nationalized, and they were forced to uh, work as employees in what used to be their factory. Um, go communism. So uh, they fled that rather awful situation and set up shop in the West German town of Winnenden. Uh, Winnenden actually provided the Kohlerts with a old military barracks, and um, there were several houses spread out throughout the town where they had different parts of the workshop, and work was done in different areas. It's a rather interesting uh, piece of saxophone history. So uh, the first models they made in Winnenden were simply called the Kohlert Winnenden. Uh, later on, you'll see ones called the Kohlert uh, 55, the Kohlert 57. Uh, but these are the first. This is uh, this horn has rolled tone holes, uh, which you can see here, much like a con. Um, now these tone holes are pulled out from the body and rolled over. They are not usually level, but most rolled tone holes are not level, um, and you just work around it by floating uh, your pads in. Has a non-tilting uh, B flat. Uh, it's kind of like a LeBlanc style. Uh, pinky table. does have a front F. Uh, has these nice large pearls uh, that are actually pretty flat. Um, has pretty modern ergonomics. You've got your front F. Uh, oh, and you don't have an automatic G-sharp, so uh, when you press any of the other keys on your pinky table, the G-sharp does not depress. Um, so if you're playing your C-sharp arpeggios, uh, you will actually have to switch from C-sharp to G-sharp. Um, You've got single post construction, that is all the posts uh, are by themselves soldered to the body, uh, so no ribs. Um, the original pads that came with it, this is one, uh, are very similar to Kahn Rezo pads, which is not surprising because uh, Kahn served as an inspiration for a lot of the German makers. So you've got the, uh, unlike the Original Rezo pads, which had a flat washer for resonator, these just had a very large uh, rivet, and they were also uh, shellacked in, whereas uh, with quite a bit of shellac. Whereas Con Rezo pads, if you see them on original cons, barely have any shellac on the back. Um, I used regular pads with uh, flat metal resonators on this, and I was blown away, extremely pleased with the uh, sound, which was dark, woody, full, and just a lot of fun to play. Um, these saxophones are built pretty well. I didn't have any special issues overhauling this. Um, if you can overhaul a LeBlanc or a Con, um, then you really shouldn't have any issues. Unfortunately, not everybody can overhaul a LeBlanc or a Con very well. Um, it's more common than it should be. But um, if you can overhaul a vintage saxophone other than a Selmer very well, this shouldn't present uh, any special challenges um, other than the rolled tone holes. Um, and obviously the lack of any parts, so if you're missing anything, you have to make it. Um, the serial number on this uh, is in the 11,000 range, and you can't see it here, but it says uh, West Germany. Um, actually, this one just says Made in Germany, so I guess they hadn't gotten the West part together yet, because uh, it was definitely split at that point. Uh, the one interesting thing about this uh, that you need to watch out for is the diameter of the end of the neck. It is very, very small compared to most tenors, and you have to use a relatively thick cork uh, for your neck cork. Now, thick cork uh, can be difficult to put on because it wants to crack. So you have to uh, either roll your cork uh, with like a drumstick or something, um, or you can steam it, or do whatever you need to do to make your cork uh, pliable enough that it won't crack uh, after you put it on, but you will need a relatively thick neck cork, and it does taper, so it's not nearly as thick up at this part, so you're going to be doing a lot of sanding. Um, the action on this is quick, uh, light, well, light-ish, I guess I'd say medium-light. The keys are relatively uh, heavy, 
and the posts are relatively short, especially on the upper stack, so you've got um, quite a bit of travel for the springs. Um, the key work is really comfortable under the fingers. I didn't find any difficulty playing it. It feels pretty modern to me. Like I said, it feels a lot like a LeBlanc. Um, the um, average price for one of these is probably somewhere around, you know, thousand to two thousand dollars depending on what kind of condition you find it in. This one, besides the speckling of the lacquer, is an extremely good physical condition. Um, and just had a full overhaul put on it, so this would probably be uh, towards the upper end of the range. But either way, oh, and you can see, um, I'm not sure if you can tell here, there's a screw that goes in the back here, and this part of this guard uh, will lift right off. So when you need to get to your bell keys, you just unscrew this, pop that off. But if you see one of these that doesn't have a uh, pants guard here, uh, then that is missing because that actually and you need that because that's what acts to be the um, That controls the key heights on the low B and B flat And I also noticed when I turn this over the B and the B flat lay down um, These keys are really heavy because they've got such long arms here um, If you want them to feel decent under the fingers when you're in normal playing position You can't have the spring stiff enough so that it holds it up when it's on its side uh, but you're not usually playing your saxophone at this attitude, so it should be okay. Um, that's about it. So this is the Kohlert, K-O-H-L-E-R-T, Winnenden tenor. Um, I have several photos of this on my website. Because of the speckling of the lacquer, it's probably not turning out too great on the video. Uh, so I'll put a link to that in the description here. Um, I highly recommend giving one of these a blow if you get a chance. The, the Kohlerts that were made in the 1950s, the Winnenden, uh, the 55, the 57, are really nice horns. Uh, undervalued, they play great, no issues, intonation is great, tone is great, um, and if you can find them in good shape and get them overhauled, it's a real bargain uh, for a horn, particularly in tenor, um, where a good tenor like this can cost several thousand dollars more. So that's it. The 1954 Colbert Winnenden tenor saxophone as overhauled by me, me Matt Store. Um, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please feel free to get in touch. You can check out my website at storemusic.com, S-T-O-H-R-E-R music.com, where you can find my email, my phone number. You can get in touch that way, or you can leave a comment here. Anything you'd like to know about saxophones, if I can help you out, I will. So please get in touch. Thanks for watching.